Welcome sixth graders. Welcome back to another online history lesson. Let's go ahead and jump into today's devotional reading from Jesus Calling. Let me teach you thankfulness. Begin by acknowledging that everything, all your possessions and all that you are belongs to me. The dawning of each new day is a gift from me, not to be taken for granted. The earth is vibrantly alive with my blessings, giving vivid testimony to my presence. If you slow down your pace of life, you can find me anywhere. Some of my most precious children have been laid aside in sick beds or shut away in prisons. Others have voluntarily learned the discipline of spending time alone with me. The secret of being thankful is learning to see everything from my perspective. My world is your classroom. My word is a lamp to your feet and a light for your path. Let's bow together for a word of prayer. Gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you um, for this new day. Um, your word tells us that your mercies are new every morning. And oh, we rejoice in that. And we are so grateful and that each day is a fresh start. Lord, I pray that you will be with each one of the sixth graders, as well as their families, that you will continue to protect them um, physically and emotionally and spiritually as well. I pray that as we go through this difficult time that we lean into you, um, help us to trust. We trust you, Lord, but help us to trust you more. We love you, Lord, but help us to love you more and to love the others around us more. It's through Jesus we pray. Amen. So we are in our Middle Ages unit. And when I say the phrase Middle Ages, what comes to mind? What do you think about when you hear Middle Ages? For some of you, you might think of kings and queens, princes and princesses and knights and shining armor on horseback. But I bet some of you have the image of a castle in your mind. So castles are these amazing structures. Not only were they places where people lived, but they were also military fortresses. Hopefully you have started watching the PBS documentary titled Castle. Remember, that's your homework for this week to watch Castle and to answer a few reflection questions in Google Classroom. So as you watch that documentary, um, you're going to be learning about the different purposes of castles, the different awesome architectural and military features of castles, but we're going to dive in today and take a closer look together as a class. So let me share my screen. Uh, I just love a good castle, don't you? I have a few um, images here that I wanna share with you. This image of a castle, I just think this is beautiful. Um, we know the Middle Ages, they weren't really the days of fairy tales, but there's just something beautiful about the structure of a castle. This one has the moat, the waterway around it. So let me show you another one that I think is just absolutely gorgeous. If my screen will cooperate. Look at that. I just think it's beautiful. It's set on higher ground, which that would be a military advantage, of course. And oh, the views from that top tower, I bet, are just beautiful. Well, we know that the vast majority of people during the Middle Ages, they didn't live in castles. As we talked about yesterday, the vast majority of people in Europe in the Middle Ages, they were peasants or they were serfs. Um, they were poor. Um, they did not have power. They did not have wealth. A few peasants owned small plots of land, that's true, but they did not um, own huge tracts of land and they certainly didn't live in castles. 
castles were reserved really for the powerful and the wealthy. So those in the upper sections of that pyramid of power that we looked at yesterday. So sometimes a castle system might look like this one, where you would have um, actually the town or the village or what we talked about yesterday, the manor in, inside the walls of the castle. And that would be, of course, for protection. Other times, the castle, most of the time, I should say, the castle was a bit smaller with the rest of the village outside of the castle walls. So here are a few features of castles that I wanted to point out to you. So of course, it has a wall wrapping all the way around it. I want you to notice the gatehouse. That's where people would enter and exit the castle. There's a large um, structure within the castle known as the keep. This is where the people, the lords and the ladies, their wives known as ladies, they would live inside the keep. I want you to notice the towers. Those would be for um, defense, for protective purposes. The ward um, is also sometimes called the bailey. Um, that is where animals could graze in that green space. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I think that's all that I wanted to show on this one. So let me show you this next image. This is actually kind of like a blueprint. If we were hovering over a castle and we looked down, these are parts of um, the castle that we would probably see. Keep in mind, every castle was customized. There are no two castles that are identical, but mostly they have these um, traits and these features. So once again, we notice the gatehouse. That's where people would enter and exit. And there are some really interesting features about the gatehouse we'll get to in a minute. Stables for animals, the well so that they could have access to fresh water, the bailey, that's the place where the animals could graze. The keep, again, that's where the lord and lady and their family lived. Notice that the kitchens are separate from the keep. They cooked over open flame. And so they wanted to make sure that the kitchen was far away from the living area in case of fire. The great hall, this is where they would have banquets. And we'll take a closer look at that in just a moment and then a chapel. Remember we talked about how when the Western Roman Empire fell, there was no central government, and really the entity that rose to fill that void, to fill that vacuum, left after the fall of Rome, was the church, and we talked about the spread of Christianity. So in many castles, there were chapels, area of worship, we see the towers there and turrets, which are even kind of smaller places, again, for military purposes. And let's focus on the keep for a minute. I have a couple of images of what a keep might have looked like. So I want you to notice here the different levels or the different floors, we might say, of the keep. And each level had a different purpose. So there are gathering places, what we might call living rooms today. There are private quarters where people would, of course, go to bed. And one thing that David McCulley points out in the castle documentary is that on the lower floors, the windows are going to be more narrow. Again, that's for defense, that's for protection. So if you have someone invading, they can't get in through those narrower windows. But the higher up you go in the keep, the windows are able to be wider, allow more light in. And that's because, well, they didn't think that invaders would be able to climb the walls, the exterior walls of the castle. Here's another view of what a keep might have looked like. And this one actually shows you the stairwells that lead you from the various floors up or down. Ah, uh, 
you know, I think I have kind of a romantic view of what it must have been like to live in a castle, but actually, the more that I think of it, they would have been pretty dark. They would have been pretty cold. Um, I still think they're beautiful, though. Here's an image of a banquet hall. Now, sometimes, as we saw a moment ago, the banquet hall was actually separate from the keep, but this would be the largest room within the castle the great banquet hall, and notice the large fireplace there. It's there, of course, to keep people warm, but also they could cook over those open flames. I want you to notice the long tables and benches that could accommodate many people. And then over Towards the back of the image, we even have this little platform area, the step up. And this is where the king or queen, or perhaps the lord and lady, and their closest friends would sit. And I think that's interesting. They are a step above. They want everyone to know, they need to make that clear, that they are literally on a higher platform than anyone else. But notice that there are entertainers there. We have musicians. We have um, someone known as a court jester who would be there for entertainment to make people laugh. So I like that image too. Now, the last feature that I want to mention um, of a castle today is the gatehouse. So here is an image of a gatehouse. And if we were able to zoom out a bit in this photograph, I think we would be able to see that there is a moat. Uh-oh. Not right now. Okay, we'll continue to go. Maybe that, maybe that um, whatever that is, antivirus trial ad will go away. Perfect timing, McAfee. Thank you. So we have, um, oh, yes, I was saying if we were to zoom out, we would most likely be able to see the moat or the waterway that is wrapped around the castle. That is again for protective and defensive purposes. Um, castles would often have a drawbridge that they would lower down that would cross the moat that would allow people in that were welcome to come into the castle. Okay, I really want this ad to go away. Okay, okay it's not listening to me. Alrighty. Okay, and this is just a zoomed in look at the entrance to the gatehouse. So I want you to notice the solid wood doors. And I also want you to notice this metal, um, it almost looks like a grid item that is up at the top of the door that is no and within just a second those working out and it would be one more layer of protection one more layer of defense to protect those within the castle yay the ad's gone Woo um the gatehouse is so interesting and david mccauley in, in the castle documentary does a good job of describing this but let's say an invader was able to get through those doors well, there's this section within the gatehouse between the entrance doors and another set of doors where invaders would be stuck. Um, there were tiny little slits in the walls um, known as arrow slits. So those living within the castle, working within the castle, could shoot arrows at the people trapped between the doorways. And then up above, there were openings called, get this, murder holes, murder holes, where those living and working within the castle, they could dump boiling water or hot tar on the people invading. So the people of the Middle Ages, they were serious about home security, serious about castle security. And that's one of the things, of course, this warfare that led to the Middle Ages not being the most stable time. We have lots of little kingdoms and they all want to assert their power. They want to conquer other areas. And that led it to being a pretty unstable time. 
So sorry to burst any bubbles you had about the wonderful, beautiful, fairy tale-like Middle Ages. They weren't like fairy tales at all. But we'll talk more about this in our Q&A later today. And don't forget to keep watching the David McCauley Castle documentary by Thursday night. Um, excuse me, no, Friday night. Ah, Friday night, 9 p.m. Make sure that you watch the Castle documentary and answer the reflection questions in Google Classroom. Bye, guys. I hope you have a great day.